You got sous vide, now what? Well, let's get started. Here are the top tips for the sous vide beginner. If you're new to kind of cooking, we do a lot of sous vide recipes and other experiments as well. So hit that subscribe button and make sure to click that notification bell so you get all our new videos. So the first thing you're gonna need is a container. So it can be a pot, it can be a cooler, it can be a polycarbonate container. Uh, just make sure it's large enough to submerge your food and fit the sous vide. But one thing you should not use is a styrofoam cooler. Those absorb water and eventually you're going to have water all over your floor. You should also cover the container because it will help with the evaporation, it keeps in the heat so it uses less electricity. Uh, you can use saran wrap, foil, or you can get specially fitted lids. Anova actually makes a container that comes with a lid, but there are many options out there for you to choose. So the next thing you're going to need are bags. You can use freezer bags, the thick, heavy-duty ones. Um, you can get them in multiple sizes, but these are the best. Or you can use vacuum sealer bags. You can link them in rolls that you can cut yourself, or you can get pre-cut ones. And with the vacuum sealer bag, this is not a necessity, but you can also get a vacuum sealer and it will make some of your things much easier, especially if you're cooking things at higher temperatures or for a long period of time. And the last thing that you need in your starter pack is probably something to finish off your meat, to sear it off, and that is a heavy bottom pan. Here's our cast iron pan. They're relatively inexpensive and will last you a lifetime. Uh, this helps to retain the heat and get you a really quick sear. There are many different options and equipment that you can get to finish off your food. We will have a video in the future going through that as well. No matter what kind of bag you're using, I always like to double bag or double seal. Um, that's just so I have a peace of mind and water is not going to get in and ruin my meal. And if you do have a vacuum bag, you don't always have to seal it with a vacuum sealer. You can have the roll cut a little bit longer and then use the water displacement method, then clip the edges to the side. So this is especially helpful with things that have a lot of liquid. And bonus tip, if you do have something with a lot of liquid, like for a marinade, you can always freeze it and it makes it much easier to seal after that. And if you are using a Ziploc bag, make sure that the zip is above the water line. You'll want to make sure your food is completely submerged in the water. Uh, that way you can make sure water circulates and everything cooks around evenly. And that's also because air is a very bad conductor of heat. And there are multiple ways to keep your food down. One of the ways that we do is that when we double bag it, we put a weight in there, we put fork, knife, whatever we find that's heavy enough to keep Butter it down. Butter knife, not a sharp knife. You can also use a wire rack or use pot lid holders to hold everything down as well. Now don't be scared to experiment with everything. Even the temperatures that we give you are really just suggestions. There are so many different opinions out there and you do you, as long as you like it, it's good to go. That being said, you wanna make sure your food at least reaches a pasteurization point. So for example, the thicker the cut, the longer you're gonna to need to cook it. If you're cooking more than one piece of meat in a bag, if you have two steaks, maybe one inch each and you have them back to back, it's not counted as one inch, it's counted as two inches. So make sure your temperature and your timing is for two inches. A good reference that I use is from Douglas Baldwin and we've included the link in the description below. You'll want to avoid the danger zone. And those are temperatures that are below about 125, give or take you'll want to avoid extended periods in that zone because that's when bacteria can grow. And if in doubt, throw it out. If it ever balloons to like something really big or if it smells off, obviously, don't go for it. It's better safe than sorry. One pro for the sous vide is that you can leave something in the water without overcooking it. If you leave it in there an extra hour or two, it's not gonna make a huge difference, except for eggs. Those suckers are really hard to master. So anything else is okay, not eggs, and probably fish. We've done a lot of sous vide experiments with eggs, and we made a video about it as well, so check that out. Now I've said that you can keep things in there longer, but longer is not always better. And I'm talking about those extremely long cooks, 48 hours, 72 hours. We try to find a balance between the temperature and time, because who really wants to wait that long for their food? Also, the longer you keep it in there, yes, the more tender it gets, but some things can also become mushy. All the times that we talk about, that starts when the water reaches temperature. It's always better to start with hot water from the tap since it can save on your electricity bill and save your sous vide, but also it can help you get to your cook faster by getting to temperature faster. One thing about the sous vide is that when it comes out, 
of the bag, things are ugly. Some things are gray, they don't look very appetizing, and to fix that, you're gonna want to sear it. You wanna sear it hot and fast. Since the meat has already been cooked, you don't want to overcook it and keep it in there too long. So the best way to get a longer sear and a better crust is to chill your meat. Put it into an ice bath or into the freezer for a couple of minutes, and that way you'll buy some extra time for a nice thick crust. Does everything have a crust? Not everything has a crust. Some things don't need a crust. Now for some dishes, you have to take extra steps after the sous vide to finish off the dish. You'll want to do them in a very hot grill, hot oven or hot pan, and that's so it doesn't overcook the meat on the inside. All the extra steps afterwards, it's really to add an extra color and some extra flavor. You want to keep your juices from the bag. Those are excellent for pan sauces, for gravies, for soup bases, for your next dish. I call it liquid gold. Now we try to be efficient when we do our cooks. We try to pair things up but that's under the same temperature. For example, the uh, sous vide mashed potato and sous vide vegetables, they're both at 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So we put them together, we make sure that both are submerged, but now you have cut off your cook time by half and you have two beautiful dishes done at the same time. So find dishes that you can cook at the same temperature. Another great use for the sous vide is to defrost your meat. So I fill up my bucket with cold water. I put my sous vide in set to zero Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit, whatever the lowest it's gonna go. I put my meat in, let it circulate around and that will cut your defrost time by a lot. And finally, be patient. It takes time, but as long as you plan ahead, you will have a perfect meal. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. It will help our video a lot. And if you have any questions or feedbacks, put it in the comment section down below.